You're training your shoulders consistently. You think you're doing everything right, but they simply won't grow. Look, in my experience, this is due to three reasons. This is what we're gonna talk about today. If your shoulders aren't growing, it's probably due to the one of these three reasons we're about to talk about. Ooh. You guys wanna guess? Well, First this one, is a uh, hot topic guesses. for me on the uh, recording with the guys. This is so, if, uh, on the, I don't know how often you guys are checking all the YouTube troll comments mm. that are amazing. Oh, yeah. uh, for the series right now, but shoulders has been a, a, a hot topic. One of the clips that went viral that Josh made uh, was the uh, rear delt fly clip. So oh, I'm, yeah. I'm going to say that one of the three is related to that. 100%. 100%. Yeah, yeah uh, and I found that training clients. Two two things. One, people don't often train their rear delts, not, not nearly as consistently as they train their side delts or do overhead presses, but two... I almost never, you're actually, Adam, you're one of the first people that I've ever seen do a rear fly properly. Yeah. Most people turn it into like a modified row almost. Like it's a lot mm -hmm. of rhomboid, mid trap. It's kind of like this squeezing back here. Whereas it's really just bringing them out. Like the rear delt really creates this kind of short range of motion. And when you develop your rear delts, it creates a round, nice, nice triangle or square shape your shoulder without that rear delt your shoulders look like they slump forward in fact people often blame shoulder development on side delts but it's actually often yeah. your rear delt i agree plus it's important from a functional perspective to keep that all nice and tracking totally uh, in place so yeah it's a it's a definite uh, important one to factor in. yeah so so you know when you do bent over flies for example for the delts you want to round your shoulders and it's a short range of motion you don't want the scapula to come really too far together at the top otherwise it becomes like a mid back exercise and the elbows need to f be flared out. Yeah. You don't want the hands to come out further than the elbows or like in this kind of externally rotated position, you want them out. And what you, what you want to think about, at least this way I used to communicate it is you separate the dumbbells or pull them out rather than mm. pulling them back. Yeah. I say fly out. Don't fly back. Yeah. Okay. Same right. thing. Yeah. Yeah. So most people fly back and it's the, what makes this so difficult is that you're, there's bigger muscles, right? The mid back is much bigger and stronger than the rear delts. Yeah. And so when you think about, uh, you know, the brain, the brain sees weight, move weight, body says, do it as efficiently as possible. That's it. So if the goal here was to just move these dumbbells in this fashion uh, as easy as possible, then it would be advantageous for the back to take over because it's a bigger, stronger muscle. But since you're bodybuilding or sculpting or trying to target a specific area, it's count it's counter. So that's what makes this so challenging. If you just look at somebody doing the exercise and go, oh, okay, I'm going to do that now too, and you don't understand the mechanics of the movement or what that muscle is responsible for, easily the back takes over. And then uh, then you end up just working your back out, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, except for you're trying to target your rear delts. And there's better back exercises. Yeah. Exactly. And <laughs> so. so that and that was a big turning point for me in my overall shoulder development. And what I found was the building the shoulders, in, in, in particular the rear delt, not only did it bring my shoulders together, but then it made my arms look better and it brought my back up yes. together. So that, uh, to me, that muscle is such an important, in, in, in this, uh, well, also for functionality, like Justin said, but aesthetically, like when we're trying to build an aesthetic, symmetrical physique, the rear delts just bring the back together, brings the side I, of your shoulder I, and arms, have you, it all out. Yeah, have you ever seen an underdeveloped shoulder with an overdeveloped uh, rear delt? Never. No. It's <laughs> always, always, if it's a great looking shoulder, it's because it has huh. an incredible rear delt. I read I read a, a bodybuilding magazine as a kid, luckily that said that, and so I never avoided rear flies. And I also you know, tried to feel it in the target area. So luckily I learned really early and that really led a lot to uh, my shoulder development. But you know, if you're doing rear flies and you're using you know, 30 pound dumbbells, 40 pound dumbbells, you're probably not doing them Right. For the, yeah. I mean, I could use 15 pound dumbbells and make them really hard by isolating that small, you know, rear delt muscle. Well, how do you feel too then uh, in, in terms of people performing like just like a lateral raise, like improperly? Like I feel like I see that Same all thing. the time. That's the second, that's the second Same one. Same thing. Yeah. That's a, the, the side delts are another thing that's done improper, right? Even if you're doing them, you do them and your traps take yep. over the movement because yep. your traps can man boy your traps can shrug a lot of weight yeah it looks almost like a clean like if i do a heavy lateral my hands come up higher than my elbows and i'm squeezing yeah. back here on my shoulders whereas a lateral my elbows tend to stay at the same height or height of my arms and i'm not allowing my scapula to shrug so it's this motion right here and i'm using just the side delt and it requires a lot less weight. So in fact 
if you go too heavy, you will inevitably turn into this kind of upright uh, clean where – if you want to do a clean, there's nothing wrong with a clean. Nothing it's great wrong with that. Exercise. Different exercise, though, yeah. Totally different. So I, I actually think this this advice gets a bit convoluted because you'll see examples of these incredible bodybuilders with incredible shoulders doing some of these really heavy stuff. Yes. And I think it's important, too, to understand the, um, the educational process of lifting controlled and light and with perfect technique first, right? So part of the theme of the conversation that I've been having on this series too, is just that quality of reps trumps everything. And it doesn't mean that at one point you might not, you might catch me in the gym doing what we call like cheat reps or using some momentum or doing right. things like that. But it, it's after a, a very solid foundation, a uh, mechanical foundation has been laid first, meaning I've done lateral, you know, hundreds, if not thousands of reps of lateral raises with light, perfect form i have a great connection to that muscle mm -hmm. i can i can call upon it instantly just by thinking about it through the movement and so what you what people miss is that that bodybuilder that looks incredible that you see lateral raising 60 pound dumbbells you know and then you go try and mimic it is that for probably decades that bodybuilder has built an incredible mind muscle connection with those those laterals and so he can now do these exercises where he kind of cheats the mo movement and still engage really well. A really, really good bodybuilder will be able to target and isolate a muscle with almost any technique. That's right. And, and I, I would never teach that yeah. to most people because most people don't have that skill. Yeah, you got to build that connection. Well-developed bodybuilders have that ability to target muscles with technically, technically wouldn't necessarily work that way. So I wouldn't look at the advanced uh, bodies. Plus, they're already so well developed and, and all that. It's you know, it's not necessarily the best example. And if you're one of those guys, look, if you're doing sloppy form and your delts look great, then just skip forward. But if you're working out and you think you're doing everything right, like why aren't my shoulders developing? Why are my traps developing? But my shoulders aren't developing. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons is because you're not doing your lateral raises properly. You're not isolating the side delts, and it's becoming this kind of upright. You know this this clean uh, type exercise where you're hitting the traps. Yeah. Now another one I I tend to see a lot, and this is I don't know if this started with trainers coaching or like the bodybuilder community kind of did kind of partial reps of this, but like in terms of an overhead press, yeah. I don't see a lot of full range of motion overhead pressing, if not even like an overhead standing press. Uh, you don't see that. As no, much. nobody, almost nobody in the gym does a overhead press where they bring the barbell all the way down to their collarbone and then press with full extension of the top where the head comes through and they're locked out. Like that's a full range of motion. What you typically see is this short kind of 90 degree press. And I know why people like that. You can use a lot more weight. Yeah. You can add way more weight to the bar or dumbbells versus doing this kind of full. So when I was younger, I did the short range of motion overhead presses. It, it wasn't until much later that uh, I had a friend of mine that I worked out with that did these really full range of motion overhead press. And he used a lot less weight than I did. But his delts were so well developed. Yeah. So I tried copying him, and I, I could not lift nearly as much. But I got the craziest pump in my shoulder. So now when I press, it's this real full range of motion with the overhead press because you're missing half the yeah, exercise. There's more that. opportunity to uh, uh, you know strengthen parts of your muscle that you wouldn't tap into otherwise if you don't go through that full range. Mm. I know that part of it, the thought process is keeping a constant muscle tension yeah. uh, if you have it a little bit shorter. But then again, you do that you know, we're going to get in motion. range. We're going to get that in range strength. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, this one was a really, this was weird when, when I connected this and, and cause I too lifted the 90 degree military press, right? It was like the standard bodybuilder shoulder press. It wasn't until much later did I do full range of motion and had to go a lot lighter. But it was like not only did I not I, not only did it develop my delts, it, the the upper part of your chest gets incorporated a little bit there too. So it just made that whole yeah. top of your chest and shoulder caps look a million times better with half the load. It was just yeah. it blew my mind that that was not a, a adopted in the bodybuilding community. No. That it was skipped and not focused on because it I used saw to be the way people overhead press. If you watch the bodybuilders of the seventies, they were all real yeah. full range of motion. And, you know, by the way, and I know this is an aesthetic conversation about developing great delts. And, and by the way, the studies do show full ranges of motion uh, always build more muscle than shorter ranges of motion, if there, even if there's more load on the shorter range of motion. But there's also a, a functional component here. 
the shoulder joint isn't just the upper arm moving in the joint. There's also your shoulder blade that has to work with your humerus. So you have a shoulder blade plus the humerus, and they have to work together. When I stop short, okay, and I strengthen myself in this short range of motion, what ends up happening is I create an imbalance between my humerus moving and then my scapula moving with it. So what ends up happening is people who train in this short range of motion often suffer from shoulder injuries yeah. because they have this discrepancy of strength. Then you mm -hmm. see them do one full range of motion rep and they're like, it hurts my shoulder. Yeah. Anything outside of that range, you don't train, you're susceptible. No, and you have unhealthy shoulders. That's why shoulder injuries are so common uh, with people who lift weights. It's because uh, of the short ranges of motion with the overhead pressing type Crazy. exercises. Hey, sorry to interrupt. We have a free guide titled Understanding Your Mood, Stress, and Sleep. It tackles all of those things from a health and longevity perspective. It's a totally, totally free guide. So just click on the link at the top of the description below. So nice, you know, uh, working out in here in this, this studio being almost done. We're like this close, man, yeah. to this, this place being completely finished. I actually are love. you Are you using the, um, what is that press thing you said? Viking on the press. PRX? Yeah, Viking like, press. How do you like it? You use it the it. other day, right? Use it the other day. I'll be using it today again, today. So I shoot shoulders today. So um, I love that thing. Yeah. I love it. The now best. these, these racks are different than the other PRX ones we had. They are. So these two arms fold out and yeah. come out. So comes, it's there's four fails. posts instead of two, right? So, so normally, more, yeah, there's It's two. a full cage. Full cage. Wow. Yeah, so the other yeah. one, which, the other one I think is phenomenal too, excellent. though. Yeah, the other one is a, is a, is a more than sufficient. That's what I have at my house. It's what we have at the Truckee house. Uh, that I love that one, but this one is like full on rack. What trips me out about the PRX is it's obviously designed for home use, but it's the most stable uh, rack I've, I've ever used because of the way it's attached. Yeah. It's the most stable rack. It's funny to me why I thought the opposite was true until we worked with them. Totally. I, I thought, oh, yeah, that's weird. It's not going to be as stable because it, but it's the opposite, which thinking it's back, way, it's it like, doesn't move, course. it doesn't shake. Yeah, it's, it's attached to a wall, plus it's got the legs. Yeah. And so, of course, it would be as stable, if not How more far stable. do these come off when you fold them in? Is it like the other one where it's only like six inches? Off yeah, there's yeah, like barely- yeah, Six to eight inches. God, that's crazy. Barely clearance out. That's yeah, crazy. Just, I have an old school cage at home I bought it years ago, and I'm-, I'm It's so weird to me that you still haven't changed. You know what it is, is I haven't found a wall to attach, and I'm also just lazy uh, to do it, um, but I, I need to set it up because it takes up so much space. Yeah, I you probably- just fold it in, I could park another car. I know, I was gonna say, you yeah. don't even use, you don't even park in your- so I do. You, do you park I in your garage? I park my car in there. Oh, I don't it. park Jessica's in there. Yeah, I mean, I would. That's to me that. I mean, I want all of my garage space, and so it's the fact that I can hang the the barbells, yeah. hang hang everything on the wall, I have to have it, yeah. and park the cars in there. You is, guys both have, yeah, like yeah. yeah. How many of your workouts are at home versus here? Are they all here now because of the filming? So I'm shooting. I'm trying to do. No, they're not all here. They're uh, they're at home too. Um, so about two, about half, two to three workouts are at home two to four work or three to four workouts okay. are, are being done here. So right now I'm running uh, a maps uh, 15 protocol, although I'm modifying because of my injury yeah. and some of that, which was so funny. I was you know, these comments on YouTube and some of that. I thought he was going to run maps 15 exactly how it is. I wanted to see that. It's like, well, I'm sorry. I'm fucking <laughs> tore my pack. <laughs> yes. yes. Well, sorry, I wish I was running things. it too, exactly <laughs> the way it's laid out. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> you know, so, but I mean, it's very much so, uh, the mass 15 um you know protocol it's a, a compound lift with a isolation exercise mm -hmm. with it it's two mate mostly two exercises a day one day i dedicate to kind of like windmill ab rotational stuff so the six day is kind of core yeah. core focus i save that one for home that one mm -hmm. i haven't shot yeah, in here yeah. it's kind of like whatever you know uh, although i did shoot some stuff on my instagram showing the windmill and how, how bad it was um but that's what it's looking like right now. Now, what I haven't decided is, uh, and this when this will come out live, I'll have decided by then, is I think I'm gonna move, uh, it's been a month, after this week will be one full month, I think I'm gonna move into a more three-day week anabolic type of yeah, protocol. Yeah, full body. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I haven't decided if I'm gonna do that or I'm gonna do my own version of a split where I do upper, lower, upper, lower type of deal. Four-day split. Yeah, mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm kind of wrestling with do I want to do a uh, upper lower split right now, or do I want to run a maps anabolic type of style? Mm -hmm. um, because I'm itching, I'm actually itching for more. And it was maps fifteen was perfect with the amount of volume, and I nice could, you're feeling it. And now. I could definitely, I could technically keep going the way I am, but you know, uh, the the part I'm missing is the the, the crazy pump in, yeah, my, in my full body yeah. and stuff like that. So I'm wrestling with that right yeah, now. Yeah, so yeah. we'll see what I what I do. That's so, fun. That's yeah, fun, yeah. man. 
Uh, they, uh, uh, I got to tell you guys about a new uh, a new peptide that they're studying. Right, this is not available, by the way, for, for any partners or anything like that. So everybody's going to get excited when I read about this. Mm. But it's a peptide that they identified. It's uh, it's called it's this like long S L U P P three three two. All right. So what's so exciting about this? Well, they used it on uh, mice, and they gave the mice. So essentially, what it does is it is first off, it, it causes weight loss, fat loss. And it convinces the body that the muscles are exercising. So the metabolism what? boosts and the muscles develop more stamina and endurance what? by doing nothing. What? what if you pair it with something? Uh, okay, obviously, that's what would happen, right? But yeah. check, check this. So, so it's an exercise mimetic. They gave the mice, the mice that use this peptide, they did no exercise. They didn't do anything with it. Ran 50% further than they did before. <laughs> it was like they were working out. Wow. It was like they were working out simply by using... This peptide. What? Yes. 20% loss in body weight? Yeah. Oh, you have it all up there. Yeah, it does Look at that. up here. So it reduced fat mass, increased energy expenditure, improved insulin sensitivity. It what? increases at muscle activity. Uh, so increase the number of fatigue-resistant muscle fibers and improved endurance running. Uh, in obese mice, it caused a 12% loss in body weight with no change in diet or exercise. Wow. So they changed <laughs> that. They literally sped up the metabolism. So what's really cool about this, Sal, this peptide is... One of the things that we're, we are running into, we noticed this when we started doing our GLP-1 group and kind of learning about this process, is there's a lot of people that I don't think are the best candidates for GLP-1 that are taking it, that something like yep. this would be far better for them. Yeah. Like, they don't, they're like there's people that are in... in, in yeah, or like, I need to lose 15 yeah, pounds. They're or... just, they just just want to, like, maintain their muscle mass but lose a little bit well, of body fat. It's, yeah. glad that you, it's funny that you brought up GLP-1. What do you think is motivating... Uh, these researchers have come up with exercise mimetics right now. Oh, yeah. Probably that. Yeah. Because what they're seeing with GLP-1s, yeah. right, is people are taking them. They're not strength training. Uh, they're not eating the protein intake. They're losing muscle. So they're they're trying to come out with compounds yeah. that mimic that exercise. So we may be in a... So what happens it's when like, you... Like, just exercise. Listen, you guys, what happens when yeah. you combine those? It's crazy. What, that's, what do you think? Of course... Of course, that's what's going to happen. There's no way they're going to. So here's what's here's what's trippy about all this. And by the way, this is with mice. We don't know what if it's actually going to deliver with humans and all that stuff. But let's just speculate, right? Imagine if we were able to literally induce exercise-like and fitness-like effects on the body without any activity, without any watching your diet. People are going to be really disappointed when they realize that uh, they look better. But the benefits that yeah. people talk about with exercise, they're, they're not the getting them all. strength behind it. Not just that, but they're just not getting the, the value of it because there was no work. There was no effort. There was no challenge. There was no journey. Yeah. yeah. It's Now at this point, it becomes cosmetic surgery. And, uh, you know, this is going to sound like people are, you know, people who work out understand. People who don't work out don't get this. Yeah. But uh, so much of the value that comes from consistent exercise is in the learning and the struggle and the relationship with pain. In the failures, in the in the in the in the work, like anything else, like you, if you just snap your fingers and you look fit, you're not going to get the benefits. You'll get the visual benefits. It's, which, it's everything. Yeah, this is everything in life. Yes, everything. We're getting there, dude. It's such. A, We're going to get to that place. I where know. You're just going to avoid it. It's like no, this is exactly where you need. We're going to get to a weird the, a weird place where people are going to get everything they want. I had, and they're going to be sad about. I, it. I had this. I had this really uh, good conversation with one of my nephews who's in his early 20s and um, had a little bit of a setback financially. Something happened and it didn't, didn't go his way that he wanted to. Kids are a real hard worker, working hard, saving his money, doing, doing really well, from doing much better than I probably was in my early 20s. And he's just like, was just distraught. and like, I'm so far behind and this and that. It's like, man, you are so focused on getting to be this, you know, 40 year old version or super wealthy version of yourself, not realizing that when that happens, I believe, and I tell, I told him, I said, I believe this is going to happen to you. You have the right mindset. You work hard. You're going to be successful. I promise you at what it's probably nothing what you think it's going to be. But the thing that you're lacking is the understanding that when you get to that version of yourself, that version of yourself is going to think back to right now and all this struggle and all this but that shit. That was the good time. And as the good as the good time and miss this. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I know that's fucking hard for you to wrap your brain around that, right now. Isn't that crazy? As you're depressed mm -hmm. and you're sad and you're frustrated. That's the nostalgia, yeah. But this is it's it's the struggle. The struggle is where where the the silver lining is, where the gold is, where the magic is. And when you're in it, 
I think that's part of the secret sauce of some of the most successful people are the people that recognize and embrace that and understand yeah. like, hey, this is the part. And, the, and the, it, it applies to the weight loss journey and everything you're going. It's like, man, you reach th this this pinnacle and this, this physique or this uh, dollar amount that you wanted. And then it's like, now what? And it's like, oh, shit. All the hard stuff was the stuff if, that was so fun to get through. If you look at the mm -hmm. value the, of fitness and, and a healthy lifestyle, the way you look is way down the list. Unfortunately, everybody thinks that's the top. They think if they look a particular way, that life's going to change and be remarkable, amazing. The data is very clear on this. No, it actually is not. The value is not that at all. The health is a value. The mobility is a value. But there's also the mental and spiritual growth you get from the process that's where so much of the value comes from. And I know people listening who aren't there yet hear this and go, screw you. I just want to look this way. I want to whatever. But this is just, and what's going to happen, and we're getting there. We're going to, I believe we're going to get, I believe science is going to get us there with a lot of things. I believe we're going to get to a place where people are going to get everything they want. Yeah. And then they're going to be depressed and anxious yeah, and miserable. sad. And they're going to be like, w I thought, what's going on? Like, why am I still not I happy? I had when this I same conversation just with my kids and, and we we're talking about video games and like what our fond memories of certain ones. And, and it was literally like the ones that challenged the most and were very like, uh, definitive, like, Oh, I passed this boss and it took me like three months to get past. It. I'm like, as simple as that is, you don't want to play a game that doesn't challenge you specifically. So you feel like you've accomplished something. Yeah. It's just not fun. No. And it's, it's, it's no different than any, any of the rest of the stuff. And too, I've been talking a lot with Ethan about this because it's, I struggle sometimes I get excited when like my kids are like passionate about something. I'm like, yeah, I want to like go grab, like buy something to make you know, yeah. this a thing and get, be a part of it. But I'm like, no, he has to go, you know, figure out a money, you know, to pay for this. And then that's going to actually mean something to him now that he has it. Otherwise it's, it's just not going to have the same effect. And I'm like, ah, oh, I gotta just pull myself out of this and just be like, yeah, great. Keep going. Oh my God. You just reminded me of a story. I forgot to tell you guys. That was, it just made me laugh. So, uh, Max. Okay. One of the cool things, right? Kids not in sports, not in stuff like that. But he's gonna be a fucking closer. Like, uh, okay. One hundred percent. Like of course he's he got. Is. He's got like. So he he wants this uh, this Bowser, of course, right? Some other some other Bowser. It's like a hundred dollars. And uh, Nana tells him, uh, "You need to. You're gonna have to work for that. You know, you're gonna have to help Nana water the plants for ten dollars. Mm -hmm. Help your mommy do some things for ten dollars. You can wash cars with your daddy for ten dollars. Like, so he's been telling him. Like, so he came home like that. That this whole last week. This has been this last week. And so every day, he's, mom, can I help you do the do the water? So he's watering the plants and can to I make my, money. Yeah, to make money, <laughs> right? And so uh, the mm -hmm. other night, he's sitting down and he's got like all these like." coloring he's coloring these like pictures or whatever that and he's he's like diligently working I'm like what are you doing son he's like i'm making paintings and I go, oh yeah and he goes uh i'm gonna sell them no way yes on his own he yes that? yes he goes i'm gonna sell them can you bring him here i'll Bro, buy one listen listen i go i go uh I go, oh, really? He, I go, who you get to sell them to? Nana. Nana will buy them. <laughs> Nana will buy them. <laughs> right? Of course she will. Right. You got a built-in so, customer. So I get so excited. I go, hey, I said, I said, I tell you what, when you're done, before you go to bed, daddy will help you make videos to close the family. And he goes, huh? I said, yeah, I'll teach you how to sell. And so all night he says, daddy, you can teach me to sell. You can yeah, I'm going to teach you to sell. Oh, bro, your heart must bro, be so. Bro, yeah. It's like, <laughs> I was like, so oh, I said, listen, so I go, I go, I go, listen, swelling. I'm going to teach you an alternate advanced close. So this is to make sure they have to buy something. And he's like looking at me all of a sudden. I'm like, so I'm going to record you. And then you tell Nana, Nana, do you want to buy this one for $10 or this one for, or for, for 20, for both of them for $20 like that. Right. So I repeated it, get him to say it. And then I video him like that. So I, and then I, I had him do it for like each family member. And then I sent the videos <laughs> to, each, <laughs> to, each, to each member of the family. And they're all like, Oh my God, I'll take one. Oh, I'll yeah. take one. The guy made like 50 bucks, like in a night. Dude. Hey Nana, do you want to buy this, um, uh, this one for $10? Oh, this one for $10. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, yes, it worked, Dad. I was <laughs> like, bro, it was so great. He repeated it just right. Like, he had totally registered. I was like, oh, my God. Those moments are the best. Oh, right? it was so good yeah. to see. I didn't think that would, like, click for him. It totally clicked. What was that he, costume you sent us? He put on, like, a, oh my God. Like a Mario. So, it was okay. all into it. This is what's so cool about yeah. the internet today, that you can find this stuff now. And I don't know why I didn't think of this. Uh, maybe, it, I guess, probably 10, 15 years ago, you just wouldn't find this. But now, like on Etsy, you can find shit like this. So 
Uh, Max, of course, wants to be a, a Bowser. Mario theme is the whole theme again, right? For the the, the sixth holiday in a row, right? So uh, <clears throat> he's like, I want to be Fire in the Tummy Bowser. There's different types of Bowsers, yeah. right? There's like mm-hmm. 50 different Bowsers, and he wants to be Fire in the Tummy Bowser. So Katrina found a lady online who makes custom costumes. And so we had that customly made. Oh, so she literally wow. sent her a picture of what the fire and the tummy Bowser looks like. It's and the lady, made, oh, it's legit. It yeah. has a full zips zips up. And then he has a backpack that goes on. That's the turtle shell. Yes, turtle shell. It's got a, a hat that so goes on. He was so psyched about it. Oh my, he, bro, it was like it's so hot. And he didn't want to take it off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sweating all day. <laughs> He's just like, I don't want to take it off. I'm like, you got to take it off, buddy. It's getting, it's Dude, getting so hot. I bought, uh, we were at the store uh, the other day and uh, we're walking through and Jessica's like, let's get something for the kids because we had spent the whole day without them. So we want to come home and give them something. So, you know, what's cool when you have little, especially little boys, is I remember what got me excited as a little boy. So I'm like, let's get him those Spider-Man pajamas. She's like, he's already got pajamas. They're like, it's not about the pajamas. I'm like, watch. So we buy the Spider-Man pajamas, come home. How, what do I tell my son? These are Spider-Man pajamas. Put them on and see how fast you can run. He's like, what? <laughs> he puts them on. He's like, and he, go, he, he jumps on the couch. He's like, mom, I'm stickier like Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> Watch <this. laughs> yeah. And he's like, look at this. And, he, and I pretend like I can't see him because he's too fast. Yeah. So he runs by him like, where'd you go? And he's like, taps on me. I turn on, oh my God, you're too fast all day long. He's, he's running, he's jumping on things. <laughs> this is so cool. <laughs> he's got Spider-Man powers now. Oh my so God, it's so funny. That's right. We'll see what, so I'm doing something different for the costume. So I hope Katrina's like- Are you guys dressing up with him? Yeah, yeah. We're all dressed. The whole, so he's already- told the family that they have to be all Mario characters. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, so who are you? So I'm not a Mario character. So this is what I'm getting at is a good reason why Katrina would let me. So the 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 Bowser outfit that fits me that's like sick and custom like his is like seven hundred dollars, oh, right? Okay. And I'm like, order that. That's what I was she's like, <laughs> I am not ordering you a seven hundred dollar <laughs> fucking Halloween costume you're gonna wear one time. I'm like, well we can try and sell it afterwards with that. She's like, I already know you, you know you won't. And so I just forgot about it. What are we going to do? And then his costume came in, and I'm like, shit, I need to have something. I got to have a legit costume. Yeah. So we were on last night, looking the night before last, we were look, looking for costumes. She found like a really reasonable, like really good uh, Grinch costume, and he's a big Grinch guy. Oh. So now what I'm worried about is that I'm not going to tell him yet. Do you think he's a hero? Well, no, no, no. I think he was, will be upset because the whole family is Mario characters. Daddy is the Grinch. I hope he doesn't get pissed that I'm Bro, not. get the Mario thing and don't tell Katrina. Show <laughs> <laughs> He'll the, be so happy. Drop the $700. Yeah, That's dude. what I said. I was just like, She'll dude, get, he'll get so excited. I was like, just order She can't like, get mad when she sees him get excited. That's how I feel, too. So I was like, all, I, you know what happened was she didn't. Then that costume came in, and I'm like, hey, what about the one I was? She's like, I told you you're not getting that one. It's too expensive. And I'm like, Katrina, I'm like, are you kidding me right now? Like, now I'm now I have nothing. I can't have, I can't, like, his dad can't have the worst costume of everybody else. He has this awesome <laughs> costume. And so then I'm telling her last night, I'm like, I should have went with my gut instinct. I should have just got it and told you other one. So she's like, no, 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 no. She's like, this website doesn't look legit. I don't want to spend that kind of money and this and that. Yeah. So, all right, we'll do the Grinch. So the Grinch it is. So we'll see what happens. I don't know if he's going to be pissed or he's going to accept it or what. But he's, that's one of his, that's his favorite Christmas character. Remember my, oh, yeah. my son oh, likes, yeah, 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 yeah. Max likes all the bad guys, right? I know, so, that's uh-huh. right. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so he's, hilarious. his favorite Christmas character is the Grinch. So that's his favorite <laughs> Christmas movie cartoon. Or that's yeah. his character. So like, I'm hoping that, what, and what I'll do, I know what to do. I'll set the table like, guess what? Like Bowser and the Grinch are going to team up for Halloween. Oh, like, I'll, okay, yeah, yeah, I'll make a big yeah, deal set about- Set up a good story. Yeah, yeah, I'll set a good story up and then he'll be okay. If I just showed up, then he'd be let down. But if I set the table with a good story, I think I think it'll be okay. That's awesome. So. You guys feel? Hey, we finally got the happy drops. Do you feel these things when you take them? Uh, yeah, I, I do. like them. These are wild. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These it's are wild. What? Okay, so they run out. Yeah, but of all the things that are in there, okay, there's normally in all supplements, in my opinion, there's normally one or two ingredients that make something feel away or are probably the most valuable. When you look at that. What is what is it that I probably feel? So the or go to go to cola will give you a little energy, but it's a saffron. It's there's a there's a type of saffron that's in a saffractive. That's a saffractive. This is a, a an extract of saffron that's been shown to have effects. Is that a flower? Uh, I believe so. Mm-hmm. It's the little uh, not petals, but the little things inside the flower. Yeah, yeah. And it's 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 shown to have that's what the bees fly on or get on. Yeah, I think that's part of it. Yeah. Uh, so it's it's shown to have uh, I SSRI. Just know, I, just know, I just know it tastes good. <laughs> it incre- Well, don't do each. Do <laughs> if you just don't eat too. No, many. I haven't. I haven't yeah. But it increases circulating levels of serotonin, like a like a oh, like an SSRI. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's yeah, called that's, the stigma inside the flower. The stigma inside. Yeah. The but flower. naturally, so you're not worried Correct. about like it down regulating or anything. No, like no, 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 no. Okay. And I mean, there's studies on it to, to, for depression, um, and then 
for libido enhancing in some people. Women See, I would love to hear that from somebody who suffers for something like that or or struggles with something like that. Yeah. It takes something if they notice that. Yeah. I feel like, oh, yeah, it puts me in a better mood or, oh, yeah, we're in, but it's so hard to tell yeah. with things yeah. like that with the What's podcast. What's the, uh, the recommended amount? Two. Would you be four? Yeah, at least. <laughs> I was like, like, I was like at some point, I'm going to be on here. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh <my God>. <laughs> <laughs> like Tom Cruise uh, on Oprah. <laughs> I thought that was going to happen. Look how fast Justin is. He's so yeah. mobile and fast. <laughs> that was what that was. That was a slight flex right know, there. That's all did. that was. Hey, can you guys do this? Jump, jump, the jump. Yeah, see if you can do it. <laughs> if I did that, yeah. fall over. My yeah. knees are still intact. Hey, sorry to interrupt. Look, we have a free guide. It's the benefits of eating whole foods. This gives you a shopping list, what foods are best for proteins, fats, carbohydrates. There's recipe samples. It's all based on real, whole, natural foods, and it's a free guide. It's totally free. You can get it if you go to wholefoodsguide.com or by clicking on the link in the description below. Dude, You're doing all dude, right. Dude, I, I have a stat for you guys. Okay, this I came across this. I had to fact check it because I was like, no fucking way. This is true. This is true, though. Okay, you ready for this? Mm -hmm. uh, 2000, so 2023 to 2024... NBA combined payroll. So all, you know, LeBron, Steph's, everyone. 23 to 24. Yeah, this last year. Last yeah. year combined all the top players, all their salaries. All the players or all the top all players? The players oh, okay. All the players. All the players. $4.9 billion. Wow. Okay? Wow. That's not the interesting stat. Okay? 2023 OnlyFans content creators, $6.6 .6 billion. Yeah, well, that's <laughs> obvious. I mean, is it? Yeah. It's I mean, a, a platform, we're, we're a, pl a platform that's that disgusting. is. Here's what's interesting. Hmm. That's a that's a complete like free market type of platform. That is not managed commercial power behind it. I mean, that is just yeah. content creators putting out on a platform, creating their own fee yeah, and, and stuff like that. That to me is wild. When you're you because uh, the NBA is is massive. The amount of money it generates, how big it is, the amount of commercial behind it. Like to think that OnlyFans creators. Or there is a much stronger desire yeah. uh, to seek novelty with sexual desire than there is to watch sports. So it makes yeah. perfect sense. The most visited websites online are, are porn. This is like a big deal, yeah. by the way. Like, and I don't mean a big deal like money wise. This is a big problem. The data now on on pornography and this kind of stuff is pretty clear. It's damaging across the board, and it's not a little damaging. It's a lot damaging. So we've done, like run this experiment of like. Let's just let people, you know, have this crazy access. And it's messing with kids, especially. And adults, messing with marriages and everything. It's crazy. Yeah. So that much money being spent on something like that, it's like, man, there's a lot of... Now, that's yeah, not great. I was you wondering about that, because it's like, you get it for free. Like, I, I just, I've never understood the, the appeal of, like, subscribing. I, I'm the same way. They want to like, feel more of a connection or maybe feel like they're important. You see, know? that makes it even more sad. Yes. You know, like, yes. Like, oh, she's talking to me. You yeah, know, no, like, she's not. She's got some bot. I mean, like, obviously, Justin, because I'm the same way. I think this is like, that's so weird to me. But we've had strip clubs forever. Yeah. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. And like, you know, you're not going home with her. Yet you go and you throw tons of money on, on the table. Sure. Like, think, well, I mean, so it's the same concept, right? Uh -huh. Now you, you have a virtual. Get, you're getting the attention so, that's personal. So I'm curious from you guys, because you guys have boys that are teenagers. <laughs> Do you guys talk about OnlyFans? Is this a conversation that comes no, up? Pornography was a big just conversation. pornography yeah. in general. Only, that's in the same only category. Jokes uh, with my oldest, but yeah, he's he's yeah. I don't know. We haven't really dove into that conversation. That's something that we're going to have to probably discuss at some point. We've definitely talked about porn and um, you know like where uh, what he's been looking at online and those kind of conversations. But uh, I, I would know first of all if he subscribed to something because like we have all the data from his phone. Mm. So okay. I would know that yeah, at yeah. least. And plus, well, the, the social media thing has been rough because it's like you can't police that. So hard dude, to police, right? And it starts with now. There's there's other ways entry points, but like Snapchat is definitely like a first sort of entry point for a lot of kids yeah. now because it's just. And I actually don't mind it as much because it's more just like hey, it's it's almost like texting. It's, yeah, it it, is. there's yeah. nothing crazier other than just texting, and then yeah. it goes away. Uh, but then that's like sort of the gateway uh, into the TikTok yep. and then these other like horrible platforms that I've just, I'm like, no. Yeah. And then he 
realizes that if he's now I have this like uh, shirt I want to sell, I, I'm not getting any views. If I put it on TikTok, you now I get views. Look, Dad, I have this to show that I'm getting. I'm like, those aren't even real views. I'm like trying to like, <laughs> nag it out, you know, and like, I'm, you know, and then I'm also like, yeah. I got to check myself because it's like he's excited about sure, like the sure. interaction. And, but I'm like, dude, this is such a worthless platform. You're not going to get any return. Like, let's move our focus over here. There's yeah. always the what I find interesting about all this stuff that we look at and we go, this is damaging, 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 is the promise of money oftentimes allows people to justify, you know, this kind of stuff. Like, well, but, you know, totally. they're making money. Yeah. Money's not everything, you know? It's like you know, like these, these these girls on OnlyFans, first of all, what percentage of them are actually millionaires? Mm -hmm. Very small percentage. Very small. Very small percentage. But even then, even those people uh, who are millionaires on there, like, are they really improving? Dude. Generally, their quality of life, their mental health. I'll make an argument that probably not. I'll go on a limb and, and say there's so many more opportunities I had didn't even know exist right now that, that yeah. you could make money just yeah. by sitting there basically doing nothing. Like if, if you actually did something before and you have like a, a skill or a specialty yeah. or something. Like, for instance, like Courtney was just kind of looking over this because it was like, I don't know, we, we kind of have made – uh, remodeling and all that starting to come up with bills and all this and for some reason she thinks oh I could you know do I'm like babe we're fine like yeah. <laughs> you don't need to look for odd jobs you know <laughs> like I don't need you and to do here's that my twenty five dollars and that Eddie Murphy's kit is one of my favorite yeah. skits of oh, all time all, yeah, I totally Eddie thought Murphy. of that yeah, yeah. she was like bring this now up we to make me. four billion seven hundred and sixty five dollars and twenty five dollars <laughs> that's a great that's oh a thanks great uh, is that raw is that raw is uh, raw or delirious okay. one of the yeah someone have to look at the editing team out to look at that that's probably all that's before they were born oh all yeah. Of them. Yeah. yeah yeah so so she found out that literally there's this uh way she can make a good amount of money if like lawyers when they go to trial they need um they need interpretation for charting that nurses do oh, and so all she'd she have knows to do all the codes is interpret this for like it like hundreds of dollars an hour just oh, really? read it over, tell them what they're talking about, and that's it. Bro. And I was like, Pfft. I was like, okay, yeah, you can do that one. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> there's it's that's awesome. So I, it's 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 interesting, right? Because you have this, it's like a, a double edged sword, right? You have uh, obviously uh, where the housing prices have got, what the cost of goods is, gasoline. I mean, it's just so crazy for a kid right now that's teenage, early twenties to to look at that. That has to look so overwhelming. But yet at the same time, too. There's shit like this on the internet that did, this did not exist. No. I just shared, I don't know if you guys heard me, but right before we came in here, I was looking at a post that our, our buddy Enrico did. And it was on this girl who works four months out of the year, makes a million dollars a year. She literally, all she does is if for Halloween and the, or the whole Halloween season, October oh, or whatever, really smart. sets up pumpkins in front of people's house, just in the Houston and Dallas area, yeah. not worldwide, not even statewide, just in two big so she cities. She shows up to decorate your house. Also. Yes. And yeah. she starts... She she has an Instagram. Her whole Instagram is built around basically wow. showing her get the product, showing the finished product, so people can see like, oh, that looks really cool. I like that. She has packages from as cheap as like a, I think one hundred and thirty or three hundred dollars, all the way up to like two thousand dollars in that range. Yeah. And then she also will start, pick it up when it's all done. And she books out before the end of August for all of October for an entire year. And she and then all she has to do is service so the people. Smart, she's done. Dude. Like what, what, what a great like gig. just. Yeah, I mean, before social media and the internet, you couldn't have done that. No, there's people that do with Christmas lights too. Yeah, yeah, yeah you hire them just to. I've put seen up the it lights. even um, like they do these picnics where they set up the whole thing ahead of time and like um, it's like this like full on um, display, like decorative display, and like the same kind of a thing where they just ahead of time sell. And, and people can just be like, oh, we're going to go on this random picnic. But all of a sudden, it's all here. Yeah. It's all set up. And I'm like, that's a brilliant idea. Yeah, makes, no. There's get, so much of that. Really get, good money. Getting, getting jobs in, e in, in general easier these days. Easier. I mean, you go around and there's jobs available everywhere. When we were kids, it was a little yeah. more difficult. If you're motivated. The, like, there's just not a lot of motivation. Yes. I mean, when around. I grew up, you had two options. You either worked on a ranch or you worked at fast food. Yeah. That was it. Yeah. Or, you, or you had a paper route. You guys yeah, ever had a paper or construction? Route? I mean, dig yeah. dig ditches all day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there were, there was like I wash dishes at the pizza. There was a there was a handful of like for for basically uh, for uh, underskilled employees, you could only do a handful of things. What did you guys make back then? I was making I think four four dollars a <laughs> four twenty five. Yeah. So did I? Yeah, yeah four twenty five an hour. Yeah. yeah, that was the minimum wage. That was right? minimum. Yeah. <laughs> and before that, yeah, it was just fifty cent. <laughs> yeah. You know, minimum wage is going to be almost twenty. I think it's twenty now where we're at. 
Is that what it is? Almost here? twenty. I think it's yeah. close. Yeah. yeah, I think it's close. I convinced to... the owner of the place that I washed dishes to pay me under the table, though, so it was, it was nice. Oh, really? Yeah, I did. I oh, wow. I'm supposed to say that, but I did. Uh-huh. I was a kid. Everybody relaxed. Oh, yeah. I took every. I took every bit of overtime, anything that I could get. So I, mine was four twenty-five. But then, at, like, if I had the opportunity to work a sixth day or a seventh day, like I always took, because the time and a half seemed crazy. Yeah, like, I would do overtime as much as possible. I feel like the, you know what a good jobs for every kid to to do. I think every kid should work in retail, and every kid should work in a restaurant. I think yep. those two teach you so many skills. Should be a requirement. Yeah, yeah. like working in a restaurant, you got to learn how to hustle your ass off, and you got to learn, and then retail, you got to learn how Dude, to work. You got to learn how to and, yeah deal with people. Mm-hmm. I mean, I huge. I think just work. I mean, I would make that same case for the the ranch. I mean, the type of work ethic it takes. Oh, that's work ethic. Yeah, yeah, for right. sure. Work ethic and problem solving and, you know, language. I mean, I you name it, like there was like a whole host of skills that I had to figure out, you know what I'm saying, going into that. <laughs> so it was real. And then also just, I mean, there's something to be said too about hard labor. I mean, awful hours, getting up at four o'clock in the morning to, mm-hmm. to do stuff and literally shoveling shit like you know, a ditch. I mean, that's great. This reminds me of a conversation I had this weekend where I was talking to somebody about exercise and they were talking to me about how difficult it is to want to work out and to get that feeling. And I said, you know, if you, and this is just a conversation I, have, I used to have with my clients. One of the, one of the, the, the big mistakes people make is they wait for the feeling that motivates you to do the thing that you want to do. Yeah. And it's very unpredictable. However, there is a predictable way to induce the feeling you're looking for more often than not, and that is to take action anyway. In other words, do the thing you're supposed to do, Mm -hmm. and then what ends up happening as a result of that is you end up inducing the feeling you're looking for much more often. So it's a nice hack. So in other words, have the discipline to do the thing, and you'll get more of the feelings that you're you're looking for. Especially with these short uh workouts that yes you can do, which which was never a thought process going into that like back in the day it was mm-hmm. like oh no that's worthless but no if you can just make a nice impactful 15 minute like punchy workout yeah, and like, watch what perfect. happens yeah you end up feeling like you i think that's out. i think that's where we did the the biggest disservice to the the space right it was by us uh over complicating uh workout intensity this is why too i push so hard back on uh a lot of our peers that love to tout the studies that are related to uh, intensity, intensity yeah. and, and, and building muscle. And it's just like, man, it's uh, you. Yes, that matters a lot. You've been training for 10 years yeah. and you're trying to add another 10 pounds or in of a muscle. 60 day study. Yeah, exactly. Or in a, in, a, in a, okay, that makes sense. But for the whole rest of the world that is never been consistent and is trying to figure things out. It's like, man, they, they have to do so much less than I think that they they realize. I mean, obviously, part of the motivation of w- what I'm doing right now in this series is to kind of show that, like, man, the, if you look at the exercise portion of what I'm, there's nothing impressive, there's nothing cool yeah. <laughs> or in hype or like, wow, he's hitting some cool stuff. And it's like, I'm not killing it. I'm not. You don't have to. Like, you literally. Go send a signal to build muscle, which, by the way, when you don't ever do any of that, it doesn't take very much to send that signal. And then make good food choices. Oh, by the way, you don't even have to overcomplicate that. Just eat whole foods. And when you do, make sure that protein is the center of it. Like, literally. Yeah. That, and like that'll take you that will take 80 of that. yes yeah. that will take yeah. you into a very fit very strong aesthetically pleasing physique now will that win you a title in bodybuilding yeah. no. no but i mean most people are just looking to be fit strong yep. have some abs look good like that. i mean you can achieve that with literally that look when i first became a trainer i thought the problem that i had to solve as a trainer was how do we get people the results they're looking for? That actually wasn't the main problem that I had to solve. The main problem that I had to figure out how to solve was how do I get this person to exercise consistently for the rest of their life? Yeah, from here on out. That was the real problem. And when I figured that out, my clients became extremely successful. The results happened as a side effect, and I became very successful as a trainer versus how do I get this person the results that they want? That's not the issue. and that, In fact, people get results all the time. They just don't know how to maintain them. They don't know how to stay consistent. Yeah. And there's a lot that goes into that. But that's the thing that you need to focus on, not the intense, like, let's get the fastest results or the shortest period. No, no, no. Let's, let's figure out a way to make this last so that you do this for the rest of your life. That's the real issue. Yeah. And that's where trainers, I think, uh, need to focus if they want to be successful. Yeah, I know. Did you know that they uh, found the world's oldest cheese? <laughs> where? Yeah. Guess. Hold on. Italy. No, but France. That, no, Ireland, China. Oh, really? Yeah. How old? Three thousand five hundred years ago. What? 
That's what they say in this carbon dating. It, yeah. <laughs> it was on a mummy, <laughs> and, and apparently it was like smeared on their neck and on their head, and it was like well, it was a fermented dairy product or of some sort. Okay, which you know it's got to be cheese related. It counts, you know. But yeah. I, wow, I just, yeah, three thousand five. Yeah, I don't, I don't know where they got that number from in terms of how they, how they date that. Yeah. But uh, that sounds how how fantastically do you make, now old. cheese? Is it hard to make? I don't know how to, you know how to make cheese, right? You Why would I make? I don't know. You, oh, you milk cows. Dairy? Yeah. Oh. Well, it's not like a dairy also does cheese. Okay, <laughs> All right. I have no idea. How do you make cheese? What's the process? What's, what, what do you do? I've never done it, but I do believe you take milk and you add something in it that causes it to. Uh, coagulate or coagulate or well, create whatever. curds yes. okay. yeah and then you uh, use cheese cloth and you get out the so it's a pretty basic strain basic, it. very basic yeah basic process yeah. okay yeah because because that's that basic process been around, has been around for a long time uh-huh. right cheese has been how long have humans been eating cheese can you look that up Doug it's got to be thousands of years. Well, I just knew because it preserves for a while, right? Genghis Khan and all that. Like I remember that there was a whole they uh, lived off part, that. Yeah, cheese was a big part and of their blood. culture. Yeah, wasn't it cow blood or blood? horse blood? Yeah, yeah they, they horses ate cheese. And, and cattle and all that. They, that they that drank their roaming, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, and they ate cheese. That was like yeah. the is primary. there a, a lot of uh, nutritional benefits to drinking blood? Yeah, yeah, iron and B vitamins. Oh yeah. Well, that was the thing. To actually drinking it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. They had more protein, and that's the thing. That's what they were stronger and like more physically that. pronounced, and that's why they were dominant and over a lot of the other. They cultures. had eight thousand years, bro. Wow, Is, Wait, that's what? how long we've been eating cheese. Uh, uh, they didn't uh. find cheese, but no, 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 no. That's that's what I mean. Okay, wow, look at that. Oh well, actually, look at that clay shell sieves. Oh, che- evidence of cheese making. Well, not actual cheese. I know too that there's some like archaeological um, where they go back and they look at traces of of certain um, like uh, for instance, there's like wine that cheese, was spiked. By the, by the way, it's kefir cheese. Oh, kefir. Yeah, okay. D- Doug found it. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, Gross. Yeah, it's weird, but <laughs> but it has like like they had some psychedelic um, type of like substance in some of these wines that were spiked back in the day and they think that that's where a lot of, like the, the the oracle delphi and all oh. that where they used to go there they would drink this wine and then they would like start feeling you know the the effects of the psychedelic wine uh but they were able to trace that back to these goblets and stuff and like they found um traces of some kind of like ergot or some something in there aren't there um aren't there some animals that will eat fermented fruit and get drunk as hell i think that's a thing right uh, which which animals are like crows a bird? do that? Birds, yeah. crows. Well, they'll Maybe. eat like fermented fruit and just get drunk. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I, seen, I know that bird, there's birds that let the bugs sting them so they get high. I know that, right? There's oh. they, they let, let their wings get all like certain ants or certain bugs. Oh, sting. here we go. See, Doug, that's a great website. Wallabies get okay. So, what, what are wallabies <laughs> eating there, Doug? Uh, opium. Wow. Yeah, wow. they're into oh, opium. Yeah. Uh, the wallaby. Will they just fall over. And- Monkeys, let's see, what are the monkeys doing? Alcohol. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, there's so a tree drunk monkey that they, yeah. drunken monkey. Yeah. There's a tree called the marula tree that elephants apparently get high, or there's a, there's a, a fruit like, on it, actually, that's you, fermented. Did, are you familiar with the, the famous Bali coffee where they, oh, fall, yeah. they fall around the mongoose that shit the little pebble, they shit the beans out, and then they, yeah. and it's like really expensive? Yeah. Yes. I have some of that, right? So Did you try it? I haven't. I like. My, I kept it like as like a my it's niece. It's supposed to be like. It's good. supposed to be the best. It's, supposed, it's like literally this little tiny thing like cost like fifty or hundred bucks for this. Yeah, because they poop. They huh. poop it out, but it does. So what the, the so what the mongoose does? The mongoose like, eats the, the coffee beans, <laughs> and the way it goes through the digestive system, it brings out some of the acidity, and then it makes like the so. There's elephant one. That's sorry to deter you from this, but the, you brought up the elephants. That it just reminded me of this article I just saw. About elephant, there's this super expensive elephant coffee, and they do the same thing. They eat from these coffee beans, and it goes passes through, and then you have people catching this elephant shit. You know, it's massive, right? They're, mm. they're catching it, and then they process it, and then humans they- are just special animals, aren't we? Yeah. yeah. Just- <laughs> Just figure out weird ways of making. <laughs> yeah, food. Wait, so what? what like always on a dare, interests me is like tried it, who, right? like, yeah, who's sitting around and goes like, you know, what we should do. We should try the elephants that shit. Like, I mean, what makes you even? You're go- probably starving. Yeah, you know, we're probably like, oh, I've had food in a month. It's like, dude, it's, I'm just gonna I mean, eat the shit. I've watched care. shows. Yeah, people get desperate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe it's something like that, right? I don't know. Yeah, my, if, speaking of elephant poop, my 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 son and I are on this. <laughs> Great transition. I know. We're on this uh, journey of learning about animals and stuff. So he's super, the kid loves learning about all kinds of weird stuff. And I love it, right? Because I like doing that too. 
So he randomly came up to me. He goes, how much is an elephant poop? I'm like, let's find out. So we watched videos of <laughs> elephants pooping. They poop a lot. A lot. A lot. Yes. Apparently. Yes. Oh, he was cracking up. He was laughing his butt off of the. I, I mean, know. I want to say they're like like ten well, pound like, a, like, like ten Doug. pound yeah. balls. It's like Doug. It's yeah. Like a Doug size. Yes. Poop. Yes. Yeah. 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 That's quite a bit. That's a great visual. Yeah. <laughs> 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 looks different, but it's, yeah, a, lot. Yeah, 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 yeah. it's, it's a lot. just a little different. But yeah. Uh, you know. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. All right. So the shout out. All right. So we're gonna do something that we've never done before. So one of the one of the things that we love doing um, almost more than anything is creating new work, new programs. Actually, yeah, it's, it's my like, favorite. So it's some of the best memories I have are of going with you guys. And what we tend to do is we tend to drive off somewhere. We'll rent a house or go stay in Truckee, and we'll take two or three days, and we'll dive into creating a brand new program you know that's how we created maps performance aesthetic split like all the programs went through this process and it's an amazing fun process we've never shared that process of creating a program really with anybody we've kept it behind the curtain and it's wild it's a good time it's fun it's creative a lot of arguing a lot of yelling uh it's it's literally it's you know what it's like it's chaos so what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna film some of this and we're gonna put it on instagram live you're gonna watch us in the process of creating a new maps program, and this is when to air it on an Instagram, right? Live. That's correct. Yeah. Six p.m. Pacific, correct. on our Instagram page, and we're going to film us, or it's going to show us creating a brand new October sixteenth. October sixteenth. Yeah. A yeah. brand new maps program. That's right. Come tune in. Seeds Daily Symbiotic is the world's best probiotic. All right, what does it do for you? Well, it helps ease bloating. It improves regularity. It also helps your gut barrier, your skin health, heart health, and it helps you create more micronutrients. It's very good for you to have a nice, healthy microbiome, and Seed helps that. Again, it's the world's best probiotic. Go check them out. Go to seed.com forward slash mind pump. Use the code 25 mind pump. Get 25% off your first month's order of Seed's daily symbiotic. All right, back to the show. Our first question is from Rainbow Mom 3. Does an increase of strength equal building muscle? Not always. However, uh, consistent increases in strength will almost always inevitably lead to building yeah, muscle. It'll signal it. Yes. So now how can you get stronger without building more muscle? Well, a muscle can learn to contract harder so you can get a better central nervous system activation. That also gets trained when you strength train. Technique. You can get your technique. Your muscles can work together better. Um, uh, so your the skill of the lift, you start to master so you can lift more weight as you stay, cons as you stay consistent with this, um, then you'll definitely build muscle, but th especially those initial strength gains, a lot of that is central nervous system. It's not muscle fiber growth. I guess that what I would say is an important thing to attach to this is that you're eating in a caloric maintenance or at least hitting your protein intake, uh, consistently with this. Yeah. So... Mm -hmm. My concern with clients that are seeing strength gains in the gym, but I know that they're missing their caloric intake or they're missing, more importantly, their protein intake, uh, then they're getting a lot of the you know central nervous system adaptation. They're improving the skill, which is all positive things, yeah. but they're not reaping the full benefits of building mm -hmm. muscle and speeding their metabolism up because they're not feeding the body properly. Now, if you're feeding the body properly, you're giving it, you're getting those calories, you're hitting your protein intake and you're seeing strength gains almost always. Yes. You're building muscle. Yes. That's what I would say. Yes. But, but strength gains are great. Uh, especially in the first, I'd say three years. Uh, I don't know how you guys feel about this, but maybe the first three years of training, like that's what you should aim for with good technique and good form. Because as you continue to get stronger, 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 you're going to get results. And because strength is objective, I can measure it. I can see how much weight's on the bar, how many reps I'm doing. It's a great thing to chase versus just the mirror, which can be very subjective. Next question is from Lift to Live. What's Sal's verdict on essential amino acids since he's been using them? Uh, so now we've all, hey, I, I, I've been using them. You've been using them. Very consistent. And you, Doug? Yes. Okay. So, so I'm pretty sensitive to supplements and I was hitting about 200 grams of protein before. Um, and now I'm adding essential amino acids to my regime. I think... There's a subtle difference. Now, I was hitting high protein before, but I do think I feel fuller, and I do I did see some strength gains from supplementing with the essential amino acids. So um, I think that there might be some benefit to, unless I was eating maybe 250 grams of protein, maybe I wouldn't get the same benefit. 
But I'm doing about three to four scoops a day uh, on a consistent basis. So I'm three times a day. I'm doing it just like clockwork. Uh, I, I'm doing it between meals, uh, and I'm doing it uh, nonstop because I have yet to be consistently over 200 even. So right. I've only had a couple days in this entire process where I've got just around 200. Most days I'm landing like 180, 190. Mm. And I'd like to be closer to 220, uh, mm-hmm. where where I'd like to be. So for me, it's been a no brainer. I'm going to take it now. Um, I, on the other hand, am not that sensitive. I, I a lot of times I'm skeptical. I don't I don't think there's anything I can attach and say. Oh, I feel this. Where the true test is going to be is here in the next week or so. I'm going to go get my body fat tested again. And knowing that I was consistently under eating protein for most of the time uh, in this process, you know, the likelihood of me building a lot of muscle back, even with the things that working into my benefit are probably slim, slimmer, I should say. So if my, if I come back and I got some pretty good numbers, considering that I didn't hit the optimal amount of protein every day by also adding the the EAs in there, I'm going to be very happy and sold by that alone. The two People, the two types of people that I think would really benefit from this are people in a calorie deficit, even if they eat high protein, because I, I'm, I am convinced now that even more protein is beneficial in a calorie deficit. And uh, the problem with that is protein has calories, and sometimes people hit their targets, plus they hit their calories. Essential amino acids have very little calories in them, uh, but they have a very high kind of anabolic effect. So I could see value there. The other value I could see, which this is now becoming a thing, is where people, they can't eat anymore um, and they don't even want a protein shake. And, and I'm seeing this with the GLP-1 uh, people that we work with. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Even a protein shake to them is hard to get down. Yeah, it's really all down. they can even And essential consume. amino acid powder and water, it's like flavored water. It, it doesn't, t- it's not like protein, it doesn't satisfy in the same way, it doesn't cause satiety in the same way. So for someone who's struggling to get protein and doesn't want to choke down a shake, essential amino acids are a lot easier yep. to drink. So I see those are the two people where I can see tons and tons of value. Yep. Hey, sorry to interrupt. It's October. Maps Muscle Mommy is 50% off, half off. If you're interested, click on the link below. Next question is from Rainbow Mom 3. I see weighted vests for walking all over the place. What are your thoughts? <laughs> These are. <laughs> this is making a comeback again. Yeah, I know. This is one of those things gone. in fitness that comes in and out, in and out. We were we addressed this a lot at the very beginning, you remember? We did. It was a popular thing back then, and they kind of went away a little yeah. bit. And I think uh, Go Ruck makes Ruck. it really. Yeah, yes. it made it popular. Yeah, yeah, really popular. It's a popular brand now that uh, a lot of people have heard of Rucking now. And so. Because that between that and CrossFit, I think they've repopularized something that's been around yeah, forever. Yeah, I yeah. got into it for a little bit, uh, and it was mainly when I was like going through my whole like body weight kick, and then I wanted to you know see if I could do unique loading and whatnot. But it was just so obnoxious back then. They had like it was almost like the bomber uh, vest. You had weights. Yeah, you had the yeah. weights that were like these like little metal things you put metal in. donuts yeah. that you put in there. Uh, and then doing push ups or doing any dips or it was so funky and it would just flop. And, yeah. But so they've, they've definitely innovated in terms of like uh, making them more co- like form fitted and, and they're better in that regard. But they're just, I mean, it's, to me, it's always been funky. Here's so a- I, I have a way. I want to hear what you guys first before I say how I would use this because I really don't see a lot of application for myself personally. There's one way I could see myself using this, and I want to hear what you guys, if you would use it at all, and how you would use it if you were to. I use weighted. I, I wait. I use weighted yeah. belts if I'm doing a weighted exercise. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, maybe a vest. But here's why I don't like weighted vests. I don't like weighted vests for the same reasons why I like walking. I like walking as a form of exercise because people can do it with good technique and it's a low risk of injury. And it's easy for people to do it consistently. Now, what ends up happening, and the reason why people can can walk with good technique is because people still walk. The reason why I don't like running is because most people don't learn how to run again. They just go run to fatigue and they end up injuring themselves. So it's a terrible form of exercise for most people, but they can walk, right? But now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the average person who's gonna start to walk and you're gonna throw 30 pounds on them, they don't have the skill and technique to walk with an extra 30 pounds and not develop yeah. overuse injuries. So you see plantar fasciitis, you end up seeing you know knee pain, you end up seeing hip pain as a result, and it, re- it, it really takes away the value of walking, which is I can get the average po- person to walk every single day, and I know it's gonna be safe and they're gonna get good activity. Yeah. And the extra calorie burn you get from it, your body adapts to that very quickly. 
It's not worth it unless running in them is a horrible idea. Terrible. Yeah. Unless you're 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 training to get good at doing something with a vest on. Let's say you're a soldier. Yeah, unless you're in the military or yes. fireman. Yes, yeah, that's where I see value. Or a police officer, yeah. like you have to have gear on you. And, oh yeah, then you should. Train you actually it. have like a you know a vest totally that that's weighted uh, to deal with. But yeah, honestly, for me, it, it would be just hiking or something. Like if I was like, but even then, I'd probably have a weighted backpack, that's something right. like that's very specifically mm -hmm. to what I would uh, emulate if I was going on like a long backpacking trip. I'm going to have yeah. a weighted backpack. How did you? How would you use them? So the only way, and the only reason why I thought about this because I'm in the middle of this whole thing right now of documenting and. and Trans transformation stuff, which has got me in the mindset of like what I was doing when I was dieting and bodybuilding. Uh, and to your point you just made, which is uh, you're only going to get the benefits of the calorie burn for a short period of time and then your body adapts and then yeah. it's no big deal anymore. So I was so methodical and calculated about my weeks coming into my peak that I could see this as, as one of the variables that I would adjust as one of the last variables going mm -hmm. in. So, for like example, like two weeks out. Or something. Yeah, for example, like four weeks out, I started, uh, you know, these one hour walks, you know, every morning, first thing in the morning, one hour walks. And then I added these uh, 12 minute hit sessions the next week. And then the week after that, I would increase another day of doing a half hour of moderate intensity. And so I could see myself going, okay, on week three, I'm going to just do all the same stuff, but now I'm going to add a vest yeah. to all that. And that will create another another little gap of another calorie deficit by doing that. But what I know is that it'd only be a short period of time because then my body would adapt to this. So it's not mm -hmm. like I'm going to get long-term benefits, but it's a variable that I could change or manipulate to get a, a good week or two of just changing that and nothing else. And it would give me that that extra calorie. It's good burn. if you want to get good at walking with a vest on. If you want to train to walk with weight on you, then you should probably practice that way. But again, the average person that's walking for fitness, the value of walking is that it's low risk of injury. It's easy to do. You don't have to change your workout clothes. You could do it almost anywhere. It's good for you. It's healthy. Um, you add a weight vest to the average person who's trying to do that, and, and then you start to – and plantar fasciitis is the most common thing that I saw with clients. Mm. They would start adding weight either by holding dumbbells or a vest – then they start, you know, the, their foot would start to hurt. And then once you get plantar fasciitis, it sucks. Then you got to take time off and you can't do your, your exercise. So I almost never recommended a uh, weighted vest. Next question is from Jose Ramirez. Should I still train legs if I'm currently five weeks out from a marathon? Yeah. Five weeks? Yeah. That's so, a long time. Yeah. I, I would train legs up until you stop working out. The, the week. difference is- Until the week before. Yes. And the difference is the intensity. So as you get closer to the race, you're reducing the intensity um, to the point where the week before, like you're 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 going real easy because you're saving yourself for the marathon. But there, but you don't want to take time off, especially five weeks. You'll off. get weaker. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you'll yeah. atrophy. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. And especially as people, and then and you see risk of injury start to go up as well. But the, but you need to reduce the intensity is what you need to do. I, I think that's the big mistake a lot of people make leading into a competition is they ramp the intensity up. Because they get so nervous about the competition, when in reality, you know, you got to flip that on its head. Yes, yeah, dude, you want to peak for it. Yeah. So I, I don't know what the consensus are with all the studies. I know I read a study way back when that uh, alluded to if uh, your body be, atrophy begins to set in seven days after recovery. Mm. So if you trained your leg, say on Monday. Uh, and then seven days, or I mean, Monday, you're sore, let's say, till Wednesday, then seven days after that Wednesday, which yeah. is basically 10 days after you train them, atrophy is already starting to happen. Yeah. So, which means you probably want to train them all the way up until the week before, and then that week you're going to go moderate to low That's low it. intensity, and then you'll you will have kept all the muscle, you'll be fresh and ready to go. But yeah, I wouldn't want to What I used to do with off. my marathon runners that I trained, and I tra at one point I trained quite a few, is we would do... One day off season, two days or three days a week of strength training. But as they ramped up their miles, the strength training came way down and it became one day a week of strength training. And then the two weeks leading up to the race, the, 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 the second to last workout was a very light workout. And then the last workout was mostly mobility. Mm -hmm. It was mostly mobility, getting them ready for the race. But it was one day a week for 12 weeks or 16 weeks leading to the marathon because the amount of miles that they put on their training. And it's just, this was trial and error for me. I made so many mistakes training marathon runners because yeah. what I thought was low volume was too much because oh, yeah. they were running for you know, 25, 30 plus miles a week. 
and it was just it gets away from you quick. Yeah, yeah. You're like, oh wow, this is too much for them actually. So yeah, I have I learned the same lesson having to back off and really introduce it a, a, a lot less than I thought. Yeah, totally, hundred percent. All right, I know you liked that episode. If you did, check this one out. Thirty percent body fat for men. This is way too high. This is actually a bit high for women as well. So in today's episode, we're talking about how you can go from thirty to ten. What is ten percent body fat? This is when you have a visible six pack. Can you go from thirty to ten percent? Yes, it's possible. But not if you guess along the way. So we're going to talk about how you can do that in today's episode. Now, there's a huge range, right, of like body types. Yes. Some people can run uh, a little bit heavier uh, and, or a little bit higher.